All right. Mel is back on his Origins uh, site channel. He's come back with us. And <laughs> he's going to do something that many of you are going to are going to squirm. I maybe this is is Mel. This is a real problem when we're talking about history, because the more we scratch, the more we find. The more we find, the more we shine. The more we shine, the more they whine. Oh, how sublime! Hasn't that been the case in almost everything we've been looking at? The Muslims are really squirming because we're taking the standard Islamic narrative, which is written so late. And we're delving into the seventh century and we're asking questions that are we can only prove from the seventh century and you've been doing that i've been doing that we've all of those who belong to the sin sifters have been doing that we're the sin sifters we're sifting through the standard islamic narrative the sin s-i-n and we've been asking the question that historians so far have not wanted to ask and that is what then happened in the seventh century and i thought that there was a building called the Dome of the Rock built in the 7th century. You have been telling me that. Murad has and I have done a whole series on that. In fact, one of the, my most popular videos is one where he unpacks the inscriptions on the Dome of the Rock dated to 691. That is 7th century, and that's what we're looking for, the 7th century. You, however, are going to throw all of that out. You've now come out with some new... Well, it's not your research, and I'm going to let you introduce. It's another person's research that you've come across, and uh, you told me about it a few weeks ago. And uh, I, when I heard it, I just started shaking my head. And I said, we're going to have to throw out everything we've known about early Islam. We're going to have to throw out everything we thought we knew about the 7th century. Because if this is true, and I don't want to give the, I get the cat out of the bag. I'm going to let you do that. But if this is true... We're going to have to rewrite even what we thought happened. We thought we knew what was going on. We thought we knew who Abdul Malik was. We thought we knew what he had built. We thought we were able to read those inscriptions and understand them and unpack them and actually exegete them and actually impose upon the standard Islamic narrative everything they got wrong. Well, not only did they get it really wrong, they got it completely wrong, as we're now going to find out. Because the Dome of the Rock, that beautiful building, here it's a picture of it. Look at this gorgeous building that dominates the skyline there in Jerusalem and has dominated, so we thought, since the 7th century, since 691, is not what we thought, is not what we now know. So, Mel, what is the surprise that you're going to throw on us? And I know you have a PowerPoint, so we'll let you go and do it. Hit us with it. I've been hit already, and I'm sitting here almost... <laughs> reeling from what you've told me, but I want the rest to hear. Okay. Yeah. Over to you. So, so before I just put up the slides here, I just want to make like kind of key point. The foundation for all our history around Islam hinges on the inscription at the Dome of the Rock. All of the scholars use that to base everything around. Everything either happened before that inscription or after that inscription. And what is in the building itself, the, the mosaics and what they tell us, and the inscriptions. So the fact that it tells us that Al-Mamun uh, built the Dome of the Rock, it, it was obviously an earth, or at least we're led to believe there was an error. We should have been Abdul al-Malik. The year suggests Abdul al-Malik. And, and then we have this long inscription that talks about Muhammad, and it seems to talk about Jesus a lot, and it's very convincing. But the, the problem is, is the whole thing a fraud? Is the whole thing a hoax? I'm going to suggest that if we look at the witnesses down through the centuries, we're going to look at the 8th century, the 7th century first, the 8th century, the 9th century, the 10th century, all through the centuries. And the, the nearest thing I can think of is Schrodinger's cat. I don't know if, if the audience know about this, but basically, if you imagine there's a cat in a box, okay, you don't know if the cat is alive until you actually open the box, the cat could be dead, the cat could be alive. And just imagine that the inscriptions are like that. They're in the box. We don't know if the inscriptions exist or not. But as soon as a witness opens that box, we know for definite. If the witness says the cat's in the box, yes, the cat's in the box. If, the, if they open the box and say, well, all I saw was an empty box, then that's all we've got. So so the key thing is that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, okay? So if we're talking about witnesses that go into the Dome of the Rock and they list off what they thought was relevant, what was important, and they tell us about 
how many windows there were there, how many doors there were there. And they don't tell us the most important thing, which is the inscriptions that are way above their heads, the big ones, the most important, really, message of Islam is there up above their heads, and they don't mention those. Or even worse, if they mention inscriptions which are completely different, which we'll talk about in a later part uh, of the series, that's very damaging. Um, and that um, would suggest that actually the story that we've been told is fraudulent. So just with that preview out of the way, I'm just going to put up the slides now. So the, the material that I'm going to work from is by A.J. Juice. He wrote a paper recently, The Jewish Serpent King in the Dome of the Rock. Um, he released this a, a number of weeks ago. He actually sent me an email on the eve before the paper was to be released. And um, to be honest with you, I, I, I found the claims to be far-fetched initially, and I, I, I kind of read it with an open mind. And I was blown away within a few pages that uh, the material that he'd come up with. So here is the nutshell of what's coming up. So the first thing is there are seven holes in the Dome of the Rock narrative. The first one being that our earliest reference to a Dome of the Rock, i.e. a dome over the Temple Mount Foundation Rock, is in the late 9th century. So we have a 200-year gap. So this, to add to all of the other gaps that we've seen so far, the gaps in terms of the Quran, the gaps in terms of the Hadiths, the gaps in terms of the Sirah, this is another one. Again, this is very suspicious. The, the next big one is the fact that our earliest verifiable witness to the Dome of the Rock mosaics and the inner arcade inscriptions as they exist today is from the 16th century. So we're only talking um, 500 years ago. So this is very damaging. The earliest witnessed inscription as to who built the dome was from 1523 to 1543. And it wasn't Abdul al-Malik, it wasn't al-Mamun, but the first inscription said Umar. And we've got a witness to that. So it's incredible stuff. Number four, the earliest verifiable date for the creation of the Abdul al-Malik inscription is in the 18th century, so very close to our present time. Number five, the, the complete rebuilding of the drum from the ground up happened in the 18th century. That's um, The drum is what supports the dome at the, in the Dome of the Rock. It was originally octagonal, and it only became circular in the mid-18th century. So we can throw out all of the lovely mosaics before that, all of the mosaics above in the Dome of the Rock as well. All of that has to have come from later. And then the mosaics and inscriptions on the drum and the dome are 18th century creations, which follows from what I've just said. And lastly, the earliest verifiable date for the creation of the Al-Mamun correction is sometime between 1817 and 1833 AD. Jay, your reaction? I, th this just throws everything out of whack. For people who don't know why we're getting, why I'm shaking my head, up to this point, up to what this day that you're seeing this, all of us, those of you who are listening, myself and, uh, well, not Ma, uh, Mel, because he's not read the paper, but if you haven't read this paper, if you haven't seen this research, we have always been told and assumed that the date for the earliest inscriptions, we're not talking about the drum. And that doesn't surprise me so much because I knew about that. The drum being created in 1780s, the 1800s. Uh, sorry, the 1800s or the 18th century, in some cases, the 1700s. Now, if that that's not that doesn't get me so surprised, what really gets me surprised is what you're saying about the structure of the dome itself and the structure of the inner uh, ambulatories. Those inner ambulatories, those octagonal ambulatories, two of them, those I've always been told are from 691. But you're saying they don't even get referred to until the ninth century. And you're telling me now that these are not even attributed to Abdul Malik. These are attributed to a man, someone named Umar. Ooh, two, 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 two. We know about Umar. Uh, he died in 644. He was the one that conquered Jerusalem in 638. So if he died in 644 and he is attributed to the Dome of the Rock or this structure that has now today become the Dome over the Rock or of the Rock, then we have got some real uh, difficulties. But then you're also telling me that, that that inscription by Mamun 
uh, who re- says that he rebuilds it himself. That is not until 1817, the 19th century. Ay, 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 ay. This is going to throw almost everything we've known about this building, this rock, or the significance, or for that matter, all the references that we have, the Quranic references on those inner ambulatories are now going to have to be rethought. Because if that is the case, these are not the earliest Quranic material, as we've yeah. always assumed. This is not yep. earliest Quranic material. This is fact quite late. This is ninth century. Again, this is Abbasid material, which is if it's Abbasid material, then this should correspond with the earliest manuscripts, which are also mainly, some of them are Omai, but mainly are Abbasid. Oh man, this is going to throw out a <laughs> lot of stuff that I yeah. have, up to this time assumed we knew and thought and were working with. Yeah, this is an elaborate hoax. Um, that is mind-boggling. And for many people, this is so undermining that it would be very difficult even for Christians to accept these claims. Um, All I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver what eyewitnesses have said down through the centuries. Um, I would say put aside your um, preconceptions, which mostly come from the standard Islamic narrative in any case. And what we're looking at is When is the earliest we can prove any of the claims in the standard Islamic narrative in relation to the Dome of the Rock? That's the standard by which we're going by. It's not what I believe, what you believe, or anything else. It's really, when is the earliest verifiable piece of evidence? Okay, so A.J. Juice says the following. The dedicatory inscription in Kufic script placed around the dome contains the date believed to be the year the dome was first completed, AH-72 or 691 um, AD, while the name of the corresponding caliph and builder of the dome, al-Malik, was deleted and replaced by the name of Abbasid Caliph al-Mamun, during whose reign renovations took place. Now, the fact that this was corrected is very convincing. If everything was just perfect, you'd be kind of suspicious because you, you, you would be asking yourself, well, how did they manage to keep everything pristine for all that time and nothing was changed. But by having this little change here, it makes it feel authentic. Um, So let me just say something, go back to that slide. Let Mm -hmm. me just say something. Um, Listen, when I was studying this under Dr. Gerald Hawking, and that's where I first came across the Dome of the Rock way back in 1995, we we talked about the Dome of the Rock and we talked about this inscription uh, by Mamun. And it was always understood at that time that this was an attempt by Mamun to get credit himself with the building, that this was an, an odd thing to do because everybody knew that it was Abdul Malik that built this building and, and created those inscriptions. Mamun was trying to push himself, put his name onto it. And isn't this odd for somebody to do that? How could he get away with it? Now we can see what's going on. This actually is a Mamun. And we have to give him more credit. And then one reason why he put his name onto it, what you're telling me, is because he may have something to do with this. Well, that's where we're going with this is actually that's what the people who created the inscription want you to believe. So it's a, it's a double bluff. So they're, they're putting al Moon's na- name there really to make it feel like the inscription is much more archaic than it actually is. Ah, if they, so it's, 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 uh, it's a misdirection. So, you know, if you go on, onto a street corner and someone is playing um, with cards or hiding a ball under a cup, they misdirect you in one direction so that you don't see what's really going on. So this actually is critical because... If you are announcing these inscriptions for the first time in centuries, you've got to have a a good misdirection. Otherwise, people will smell a rat. Um, So on that note, where exactly are the inscriptions, including the the correction um, relating to Abdul Malik? Was it on the inside the dome itself? Number one there. Was it on the dome? Sorry, on the drum? This is the middle picture. Or was it on the inner and outer side of the arcade so it's important that we understand where we're talking about when we talk about these inscriptions so where they are is in the inner arcades which is here it's not directly under the 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 dome of the rock it's slightly out from the the dome of the rock 
Did you want to say something there, Jay? Oh, and this we have known, what you're saying, and I we have tried to make sure people understood this every time we brought this up. The inner and outer, and we call them ambulatories or arcades. Uh, those where you see the red stars, there's two of them. You can, people can see them. There's one that's real, uh, real, uh, real small, and that's what holds up the dome today. That dome has been rebuilt, uh, I've been told, 11 times that it's been built 11 times. You're probably going to correct me and say maybe not that many, but certainly the dates I've never been told. I had no idea that they were this early. But those I've always been told to this point, those two ambulatories, you can see them right there, uh, the octagonal arcades, or uh, those are the original, the only original part of the dome. So we've been, so we've been led to believe. Um, so where precisely are the inscriptions today? The inscriptions inside the Dome of the Rock are mainly mounted to the inner and outer faces of the octagonal arcade. So if you see that, uh, that uh, description there in red, you can see that's the octagonal. And then right in the middle is the, the circular drum that supports the Dome of the Rock today. And that little gray bit in the middle is the foundational rock or foundational stone. Okay, so... In search of the first witness to the dome, the mosaics and inscriptions supposedly created in the time of Abdul al-Malik first of all depend on the existence of the Dome of the Rock where it currently stands. Okay, so if there was a Dome of the Rock elsewhere on the site, we can't say, well, okay, so the inscriptions existed there. If you destroy the building and move it somewhere else, the inscriptions are destroyed. So what we need is we need the building to be evidenced that it hasn't moved, the, that the, the arcades have been kept intact with the mosaics attached. Um, and any building that's witnessed that's in a different location is not evidence for those existing at that time. So at the beginning of the seventh century, we're possibly dealing with basically a blank slate. There might've been a building there, um, but essentially the, the dome of the rock, if it was being built, it would have had to be built in the center of that um, map that we see on the right hand side is basically a Google map there. So where the arrow is pointing, that's where the Dome of the Rock should have been built if it was built in the, the latter end of the seventh century. Okay. Now there is a deafening silence about the Dome of the Rock. AJ Juice says, it is believed that Muslim historians deliberately downplayed the extraordinary building over the foundation stone because Abbasids intended to belittle you made achievements. However, a non-existent or non-existing monument needs no dumb playing. So he says, maybe we're just looking at it the wrong way. The fact that they're not mentioning this might be evidence that it simply doesn't exist rather than the fact that they are just um, dumb playing it. Now, Sophronius, who we've mentioned before, doesn't say that the building that was built by Umar was over the foundation rock. Um, I'm guilty of assuming that that was where the building was built, but he actually, when we look at it closely, he doesn't actually say that. He says the godless Saracens entered the holy city of Christ our Lord, Jerusalem, and immediately proceeded in haste to the place which is called the capital. They took with them men, some by force, others by their own will, in order to clean that place and to build that cursed thing intended for their prayer, and which they call a mosque. A.J. Juice says, but there is no primary evidence that puts a building over the foundation stone. So, okay, it could be. All we're saying at this stage is there's no evidence that that's exactly where it was built. We, we, we can only assume the location at this stage. Okay, so we'll have to see when we get actually evidence for a building over there. So Zephronius, um mentioned this. this is one of the last things he mentioned before he died. This would have occurred in six 38, so it's quite an early reference, but he doesn't mention it being built over the foundation stone. Now, if we go to our next reference, which is our Kulf, and he writes in the 670s about a building, but it's not where you'd expect it to be. Um, our Kulf says, in that famous place where once stood the magnificently constructed temple near the Eastern Wall, the Saracens now frequent a rectangular house of prayer which they have built in a crude manner, constructing it from raised planks and large beams over some remains of ruins. This house, as it is said, can accommodate at least 3,000 people. So we're talking about a different location to where the Dome of the Rock is. 
Again, this is nothing particularly controversial. The Dome of the Rock hasn't been built yet. Okay. AJ Juice says it can be inferred that the dome was neither standing nor under construction during the 670s, obviously, if it was built near the eastern wall. The original prayer house in Jerusalem that had been built in the 630s was enlarged and used by the Saracens on top of Roman ruins. So what AJ Juice is suggesting is that the building that Sophronius referred to in 638 is more than likely the same site, which is at the Eastern Gate, at least there is no contrary evidence to say that there were two buildings here, that there is just this one building. Okay, so that's all we've got at this stage. Um, the evidence is quite slim, um, but we're trying to verify rather than um, second guess the, the witnesses. Now, AJ Juice goes on to say that our cult mentions the Sufyanid structure of Surah 2 that was standing in the eastern part of the Temple Mount with ample space for the circumambulation, i.e. the red rectangle. AJ Juice believes that Safa and Marwa, while they are hills in Jerusalem, are the poetic names for two contemporary monuments or buildings of the Temple Mount. So for him, Safa is the Sufyanid structure, while Marwa is the Marwanid structure, which was not built yet during Arkulf's visit. Now, this part of his argument is a bit controversial. You may or may not accept his argument. So he's basically saying that Saf and Marwa are symbolic names for two buildings, essentially, which were on the, the Temple Mount at the time that the Quranic verses were written. Uh, so our audience are free to either accept or, or uh, reject that argument. It's not essential for the overall argument. It's not, um, I would say, a load-bearing argument, let's say. It's not essential, but it's it's an interesting argument. Now, he says that the Al-Aqsa Mosque didn't exist yet at this time, okay? So that's that's not a surprise either, because we, we think that the Al-Aqsa Mosque was built in the early part of the 8th century. That's what we've been led to believe. That's also going to be thrown out a little bit later. So, Anastasius Senator says nothing about the Dome of the Rock either, and this is in the, the, uh, the latter part of the 7th century. He attests to large-scale construction activities on the Temple Mount under Al-Malik. Several milestones between Damascus and Jerusalem. You, as you need a date for this. What is um, that? Yeah. I, we're talking the 690s, so I don't have a precise date for this one. Okay. So Anastasius Seneta, writing in the 690s, says nothing about the Dome of the Rock. He attests to large-scale construction activities on the Temple Mount under Al-Malik, several milestones between Damascus and Jerusalem, as well as temple iconography on pre-reform coins indicate that the Holy City and the Temple Mount were indeed part of large-scale infrastructure projects. But nothing is said about the Dome of the Rock. This is followed by the Quran's mentioning of the Sufyanid and Marwanid monuments that can be circumambulated. So A.J. Juice's argument is that the Quran is referring to two buildings, the Sufyanid and the Marwanid monuments that can be circumambulated, but Anastasius doesn't mention a Dome of the Rock. Now, if the Dome of the Rock had been built Sorry, by um, Abdul al-Malik at this time, we would expect Anastasius to mention that because it was a significant building worthy of mention, particularly as later witnesses tell us that Abdul al-Malik covered this dome with gold. So it surely would have been worthy of a mention, but he doesn't mention that. He just mentions that there was building activity going on. Again, at this stage, we can say that there is not strong enough evidence to, to either affirm or deny the, the Dome of the Rock just yet, but it's, it's telling that there is no mention of it even at this late stage in the 690s when you would expect it to be mentioned. Now, there is a very interesting detail. Again, this is um, an argument which isn't load-bearing, but it's, it's, it's contrary evidence to the idea of a Dome of the Rock being on the, the Temple Mount. He speculates that perhaps that this tower, which you can see on the left, existed over the rock. Its width is consistent with the foundational rock. From the Umaid Codex of Sana, we have designs of a tower 
that it appears to be accessible through an elevated platform with stairs, which you'll see at the bottom left hand side. Because of the centrality of the foundation stone on the Temple Mount, one is allowed to speculate whether the Dome of the Rock was the design subject in its form at the time of the Codex. Okay, now this I, I would grant is very speculative. It's not the strongest argument that A.J. Deuce produces in his paper. However, it's interesting. Uh, why do they have this building drawn in great detail? It's, it's very architectural. Obviously, a lot of it has been damaged, but it exists in this Codex of the Sana. Um, why would they draw this unless it was of some significance? Okay, so if this was produced in the, the latter end of the 7th century or produced in the early part of the 8th century, probably the most likely place that this is referring to would be in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. That's, that would be his argument. Okay, as I say, this is not um, essential to his argument. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting detail. Um, what is significant about this, though, is if this was the building that did exist, it means that there were no arcades. There's just simply a tower, and it's much higher than the, the um, Dome of the Rock. Okay, If it didn't exist on the Temple Mount, then we can throw this evidence out. Okay, So it's, it's going to basically consist of one, or, one of two possibilities. Now, I've done a mock-up of what it would have looked like if it existed on the Dome of the Rock. AJ Deuce says that it had a pleasing height to width ratio of two to one, um, roughly 100 feet tall, 50 feet wide. 50 feet wide would be consistent with a building that surrounded the foundation stone. He also found another plan in the same codex, which is a double square ground floor plan, which is basically two squares off center, which creates a kind of like a diamond, no, sorry, not a diamond, a star shape. Um, image. And uh, he says, but it would not be a stretch to speculate that the diameter of the inner drum of the Sana's drawing would have to rely on the foundation stone's dimension and would therefore be near the width of the modern drum if it were to depict a structure on the Temple Mount covering the rock. This would render the old drawing's version significantly higher than its modern shape. So whether this building existed on the Temple Mount or not, I cannot really verify that. It prob if it did exist, it probably didn't exist for that long because we have contrary witnesses about a century later that doesn't mention this building being there. So it probably, if it did exist, it would have been destroyed in the meantime. So any hope of there being inscriptions would go with that building too, if had it existed, okay? He talks about the double square which makes an eight-pointed star. We've, we've mentioned about the importance of the number eight before. This is a messianic symbol. The double square ground plan is somewhat of a surprise, says AJ Juice. Other than the identical decorative motif, the sectional drawing does not reveal whether and how they might be related, but it appears to be a foundational symbolism that replaced the double triangle of the Star of David with a Muslim double square, an eight-pointed star, that it was an intentional mutilation can be demonstrated with Jerusalem coins that were issued with an eight-pointed star rather than the customary Star of David, and the examples are there on the right. He says, I have already shown that Maccabee coins use the messianic eight-pointed star as a symbol of Jewish royalty. So his argument is that this might be evidence of a, a building influenced by um, an emergence of messianism in the seventh or eighth century. And this would tally pretty much with what Odin and Alexander has said in videos that you have done with them. The idea that the seventh century was rife with um, anti-Trinitarianism and Messianism, um, this would be consistent with that. Yeah. Now, um, when an illustrated Bible, um, it was uh, produced for Charles Mann, depicted Zachariah at the temple, uh, was this how it depicted the temple? So this is how we know the temple uh, looked back 2,000 years ago. But when it's interesting, when they did their, when they produced a Bible in the 8th century for Charlemagne, this was not the image. 
that was created. This was the image that was depicted for the temple. Um, and what's interesting about this is that even though this was an imaginative um, depiction of what they imagined the, the temple mount to, or the, the temple to look like at the time of Zechariah, it's interesting this tallies nicely with the Sana manuscript that we just mentioned, which is an image of a tower on the Temple Mount, according to A.J. Juice. Again, I'm not 100% convinced with the evidence, but what's interesting is that this is the image that the, the Christians had of the temple in the 8th century, and this is probably based on visitors to Jerusalem in the previous 100, 200 years. To me, that would make sense what you're saying here, because if you if you're trying to think of what the temple looked like when you because of the fact the temple would have been in Jerusalem, obviously, and the people in Jerusalem at that time would have been Abdul Malik, uh, the, the, whatever he was. We're not going to call him a Muslim at this point. But what we do know is if this structure was being built when they're talking about it and they're looking at the temple, they would use what was the most what was there today they would not know themselves whether or not this is ancient or archaic they would just assume use what is there to be recognizable so when people would when people when they're talking about the temple of david or not the first century temple they would say ah so that's the temple because that's the one that they are that's the one that they recognize today if that is the case that would be a present sent a present representation of what they thought the temple would be and all the this, more so, it would look that, like the tower that you're describing. Yeah, and this is the 8th century. So this is decades after Abdul Malik has supposedly built a dome of the rock. Now, you can see that there are no arcades in this image. Yeah, The arcades would have had to spread out to the left and right of the two figures there in the image of Zechariah and the angel. That's where the arcades should be if they existed in the 8th century. Now, at this stage... Our audience may say, well, that's not enough evidence. We need more evidence. In the next episode, we're actually going to show evidence of a witness um, in a few decades later who actually points out what was there, and um, it's, not, it's not this building. Okay, so it's, um, it means that there was no arcade, there was no Dome of the Rock. Um, it's going to be uh, really exciting stuff. So that's going to be coming up in our next video, but just to conclude today, we don't yet have evidence of a Dome of the Rock with its arcades in the 8th century. This means that there were no inscriptions, no mosaics, no Dome of the Rock. So it's quite damaging, and we're going to back this up with further evidence in the next episode. Great stuff. Wow. We told you it was going to be, <laughs> that this was material. As you said, Mel, this is stuff that AJ Deuce is putting together, and we uh, we knew it was going to be damaging. Now, obviously, so those of you who are listening to what has been said, what Mel is presenting here, this is not Mel's research, okay? So don't blame Mel. This is research being done by AJ Deuce, who, has, who is a, a worthy scholar in this field. This is his area of expertise. It's very recent. It's only been out in the last few months. So, so obviously it's something from 2022. It may change as we're finding out more. Nonetheless, you must have, you, I'm sure you have reactions to this. You've got the comment box there at the bottom. Write your comments. Mel is going to be there. He's going to be looking at it. I'll be looking at it as well. If we find that there is some more material that some of you have come across, share it, throw it at us. If you don't like what Mel's saying, let us know. We're, that's what we're here for. That's why it is important that we're using this channel and YouTube and also to make sure that we get this discussion going. But obviously, so far, what we've seen, this damages everything we've known about the Dome of the Rock, everything we've known about the what we thought were the earliest inscriptions of the Quran, even earlier than the manuscripts. Because these, if this was the case, 691, this would predate the earliest manuscripts. But looks like we're going to have to change that. It looks like we're going to have to rewrite our, our own historical critique. However, however, there's more yet to come because you're not just going to stop there, Mel. There's some more material that you're going to look at. Am I correct? Yeah, um, it's, um, it's really damaging. It's, it's incredible how late we have to wait before we get our first mention of the Dome of the Rock. So we're, we're not talking about 8th century. We're going to have to wait till the 9th century before we get an actual witness account to the Dome of the Rock. 
So, so quite amazing. 100 years later. So we're going to have to wait even 100 years. Well, folks, you don't have to wait 100 years. You can see the very next video. This will be coming up shortly. Listen, it's been great uh, introducing this. We have a lot more yet to go. Mel's got a lot more yet to spill uh, on the research done by AJ Dios. Uh, this is Jay and Mel, a few thousand miles apart, over and out.